Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Dave, and I like to party. I do. I love the Christmas time because Christmas time is full of parties. I've loved parties for quite a while. I have one traumatic incident at a party that I'll share in a minute. Um, but for the most part, and literally, my job is to help put on parties sometimes, and I love them. I love a good party. I love a good Christmas party. This weekend has been full of them for me. On Friday, we had our volunteer Christmas party, if you were there. Yes. Let's just get this out of the way. Last week, Jason clarified, if one of us claps, we all clap. So on Friday, we had our volunteer Christmas party. Thank you. Good. It does feel much better that way, doesn't it? It's nice. That's really nice. Okay, and then yesterday we had one of my favorite parties of the year, the uh, Strive Staff Christmas Party, which features a terrific white elephant gift exchange every year, which usually goes awkward and south pretty quick, but is fun and, and is a really good time. Before that, we had a party for my mom who just graduated with her master's degree, which is awesome. How cool is this? Quick shout out to my mom, who's probably watching. Hi, mom. Hi, everyone on Facebook Live. Also, my mom. Um, also, extra shout out to my mom. Um, we celebrated about 30 years ago. She uh, started a master's degree and then put it on hold to help take care of us as kids and help get a business started. And uh, that sacrifice that she made meant a lot to us. We didn't even know it. But now she just went back, finished. Super exciting. Well done, mom. Our whole church says good job, right? See, good, good. There you go. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can just shout, I love Dave's mom. <laughs> but if you do, mean it, because she's amazing. So at our, at our staff party, immediately after that last night, we uh, unveiled a brand new t-shirt, which is available uh, for purchase directly to the 4 Central Michigan Building Campaign Fund for $500. You can get your hands on this t-shirt. So Jason, we all know, loves Hootie and the Blowfish. Uh, and he's convinced that their latest album is not country. Not country. It is 100% country music. And so uh, we made the official Thrive Church uh, Country Music Station radio t-shirts featuring the songs of Johnny Cash, Hootie and the Blowfish, and Willie Nelson. So three artists you'll likely never see together in real life put together on one amazing t-shirt. It, it, they're still country, though. So it is what it is, and let's just call it what it is. Uh, and then this morning is our ugly Christmas sweater party, which is always a good party. We're, we had a great winner this morning, Luke, who was playing bass. He won the first experience with his amazing short shorts and tall Christmas socks. Looks next level, next level good. Uh, and then tonight I've got my uh, small group Christmas party, which is going to be a great time. If you're not in a small group, you're missing out. They are the bread and butter of Thrive Church and an opportunity for you to get connected to people on, on a really great, deep, personal level. And so check that out if you're not already. Now, when I was a kid, I told you I had a traumatic experience at a Christmas party. This was in middle school, and almost all of my middle school was a traumatic experience. Uh, if you've ever lived through middle school, which would be most of us in the room, it's a traumatic experience. Life changes right in front of your eyes, and you don't know what to do with it. Uh, I was that kid. Okay, so in about seventh grade, might have been sixth grade, sixth or seventh grade, we had a middle school dance, and I invited a girl named Kaylee to go to the dance with me. Now, Kaylee was very cute. She was very kind. She had a very uh, sweet heart, and I wanted to be her sweetheart. And, like... Kaylee had it going on, okay? And so I invited her to the dance. She said yes. And so I show up to the dance looking as good as I possibly can in the mid-90s, <laughs> rocking some khaki pants, a blue, like a navy blue sweater, which was very baggy, I can remember, uh, and itchy, and had this mustard yellow stripe across it, which, come on. That is good looking stuff right there. And back then I had hair, and so I like, I had it all waving over and parted to the side. It looked sharp. I had big old glasses, which probably didn't do anything to help me, but it's, it is what it was. And so I showed up to this dance, and it was everything you've ever pictured a middle school dance to be, right? There's the DJ in the middle, and like half of the school was dancing. The other half, well, boys over here. 
and girls over here, not by rule, but because cooties are a thing. Uh, and so we're there, and everyone's dancing. I'm not really a big dancer. Well, all right, I am. Uh, but mostly not in front of people. Uh, and so I'm there. I'm waiting for the slow dance because the slow dance is what's up, right? Right? Especially when Kaylee's there. And so slow dance happens. I can't find Kaylee because obviously we're in middle school. You can't drive each other there. Uh, all of a sudden, I see her out on the dance floor with my buddy Kyle. Heartache. Heartache. And then the song is over, and I feel relieved that Kyle's not slow dancing with her anymore. Other dances start, you know, starting to get in the mood. I'm getting very nervous and very sweaty. Both. Nervous and sweaty. Ver did I mention sweaty? Because it was, <laughs> it was a special experience. So the night goes on, another slow dance. She's dancing with a different guy. Then another one, and another one. At the end of the night, I found her. And I said, Kaylee, why didn't you dance with me? And I'm like dripping in sweat, and I may have wet myself a little. <laughs> it's hard to tell because I was so sweaty. But it's a thing, okay? And, and I, that was awkward. Uh, and I, I said, Kaylee, why didn't you dance with me? And she's like, well, you never came over and asked me. Oh, oh, my little heart was just like, and I remember that day very clearly because both my heart was broken and my sweater was because I couldn't get it off. At the end of the night, I was so sweaty that it ripped, and that was it. That's the end of the sweater. Sweat for the win. Uh, so that was a bad, bad Christmas party experience. But now, now life is better. Life is better. We can have good Christmas parties again. Life moves on. Middle school years come and go. Thank you. And, and off we go. Life goes on. La, 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 life goes on. You're singing it in your head now. There it is. Okay. Everybody, everybody loves a good party. I don't care who you are. Everybody loves a good party. Christmas time is full of them. We get Christmas parties, we get New Year's parties, right around the corner is a tailgate party. I mean, there are party after party after party. And I want to tell you a story of one of the absolute greatest parties that ever happened. It was incredible. It, it, was, it, it was just a great, great party. It was quick, but it was a party. And if you've ever read the Christmas story from Luke 2, it will sound familiar. If you grew up in a church, it will sound very familiar. If you grew up watching Charlie Brown Christmas, it will sound familiar, but I want you to see it in a different way because there's something happening under the surface that I think is worth getting our attention. And speaking of getting your attention, if you grew up in a church setting, you remember what a flannel graph is? The little felt board that you put the characters on? I realized uh, during the office this week, talking with Matt and John and Jason, that not only are these track suits delightful, <laughs> they, and they are, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason saw them at Walmart. He sent a picture to Matt and I and said, we should probably get these. And the first word that came to my mind was necessary. Yes. And so we picked them up, and I was correct. They, they're fantastic. But not only that, they are a walking flannel graph. And so I'm going to tell you a story about how there was a woman named Mary and her husband... who had a baby named Jesus. Now, Jesus was born in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. You'll see that he's here in a manger on my shirt, okay? <laughs> now, this, this is from Luke 2. I, you're never going to think of this the same way. Uh, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. So we have our shepherds nearby. <laughs> they're not quite there, but they're close. Shepherds are nearby watching over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. He's got wings, so I picture him up here. He likes to party. Angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Fair, fair note, I would be too. Okay, they were terrified. They may or may not have wet their pants. I don't know. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying on a manger on Dave's shirt. <laughs> That's not what it says. Um, 
but you will find him in cloths laying on a manger. God announces his birth in human history to these group of guys out in the middle of a field. Nothing else going on. It's dark. It's quiet. Here's some shepherds out in the field with their sheep. And all of a sudden, this big box shows up. They open it up, and blue balloons fly out. And they realize the ultimate gender reveal has just been revealed. Jesus has been born. That's probably not how it went down. Uh, But God could have picked anyone to tell the story that Jesus was born. He picked guys out in the middle of a field who would not be expecting a party or any extravagance of any sort. And he told them, Jesus has been born. Now, after this, this is what happens. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel. Here's the company of them. There's a whole gaggle of them now. I don't know if gaggle is the right word. Flock. Uh, A great company of them, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There is an army of angels. There is a huge party that just broke out. And if you have ever heard or read anything about angels, or if you haven't, I'm going to tell you, they sing a lot, they party, it's, it's exciting. Everything that they do is excited because they see what God is doing and they're celebrating it all the time. And so when this gaggle of angels shows up, a party breaks out. So they're in the middle of this field. It was dark and quiet, and now it is bright and loud. That's not what I typically picture when I think of the birth of Jesus or a nativity scene. I also, at home, we, we have this nativity set up, and I encourage my kids to play with it and, and to see what's going on. Liam, my middle child, has taken this to the next level, and he understands <laughs> there is a party going on, right? I mean, shoot, Batman showed up twice. <laughs> That's how good this party is. And not only that, you can't see it in the stars because it gets cut off, but there is a Wookiee in the stars, <laughs> which is purely biblical. There were angels, there were Wookiees, there were sheep. There, it was all there. Catwoman, Joker, random people. It's all there celebrating the birth of Jesus. It's exciting. But there's angels here in front of the shepherds, and they're singing songs and hymns, and they're celebrating that Jesus has been born. It's fantastic. I'm going to take this off because I distract myself with that. It's incredible what's happening. There is a party going on. I love a good party. The problem with parties is, and this is a big problem, parties fade. Parties fade. Parties come, parties go. That's the end of it. The angels go back to heaven. DJ Gabriel stops his music. The lights dim. And now what's left? What's left? This, this is the part that fascinates me. This is from verse 15, later in the book of Luke, chapter 2. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. The party has come and gone, and grab this, and don't forget this. The shepherds are left with nothing but a desire to seek out Jesus. The party happens, and when it's done, They're left wanting to see Jesus. The angel showed up, and that certainly is a day that they're never going to forget about. But what follows next? The encounter that's about to happen when they see Jesus, the journey to go finding him, will change their lives forever. Not only will it change their lives, it will change human history forever. 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 At Thrive, we love a good party, right? We've got three words that describe us, simple, fun, and real. And we put the fun in simple, fun, real. Let me tell you what. This morning, some of you are looking extra festive. Jason, I'm looking at you up here. Susie, looking nice. The earrings glowing are just next level. So good. We love a good party. My wife and I, our very first Thrive experience that we came to be a part of was a baptism and barbecue several years ago. Uh, out at Lake Isabella, where over 60 people were baptized at once. Amazing, amazing. 
It was an incredible party. And since then, there's tailgate Sundays, there's Christmas Eve experiences, which, shameless plug, if, if you haven't already, you can get free tickets online for those at christmasinmountpleasant.com. Get it, so we know you're coming. Uh, invite people to come be a part of that. It's going to be a killer, killer two days on the 23rd and 24th at uh, the Broadway Theater downtown. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we've seen tailgate parties. We've seen uh, dad fests, mama's day, all sorts of good stuff happen. And let me tell you the heart of why we do those parties that thrive. The heart is not just to celebrate for celebration's sake. The heart is to build community and to give you a chance to hang out and laugh and celebrate and do life together, which we understand part of the problem of being in this movie theater is we have to come and go quickly. We have to. The movies start. It's it's not my favorite thing about this place. This place is comfortable, it's nice, but we can't stay and build community often. And so these parties give us an excuse to do that a little extra. But can you imagine, I am looking forward to the greatest party Thrive has ever had in 2020 when we open the doors on this building. I am so excited about this. We're working hard at our 4th Central Michigan building campaign. My hope and my prayer is that we're in there as soon as possible because we want a space that can house this church, that can build this community, but even more so can be a resource to our community that can be for Central Michigan where people can come, they can experience the life change of Jesus, and they can come and they can grow together as people. And so it's going to be incredible, incredible. And so I'm looking forward to that. I... I may wet my pants at this party. I'm just going to, I already said it once, there's no more shame. I'm out in the open. I will bring a change of clothes, okay? It's going to be an incredible party. My wife and I love parties at home. We bought our house specifically for the fact that it's got room to entertain. We love hospitality. We're hospitality people. We have people over all the time. It is so fun. Uh, In fact, sometimes we don't even have people over to have a party. We just have a random party. Uh, We'll throw on some music and crank it up, and I'll turn on some lights, and we'll go crazy. Uh, My kids have this thing that they call a naked dance party. It is what it is. We don't speak of it afterwards. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. They strip down to just their undies. I don't know why. They started this on their own, and I'm not too proud to admit that every once in a while I join them. Stephanie does not, which is probably for the better. And in fact, since I'm in the mood of showing photos, here's the photo from our last... I'm just kidding. No, that would be so bad. That would be so bad. Scratch that from your mind. Scrub it out. I mean, scrub out this suit, too, because you don't want to remember this forever. Uh, Maybe you do. You probably do. Uh, But we love a good party. We love them. They're so much fun. In fact... uh, I I want you to get the picture of this because we think of parties, you can think of the coolest, most extravagant party you've ever been to. That doesn't even touch what happens in heaven. It doesn't even touch what God is doing and and what he wants to see accomplished. In fact, uh, later in the book of Luke, he goes on in chapter 15, he says there's more rejoicing in heaven when one repents and finds Jesus than you could ever imagine. So much excitement because somebody turns their life over to Jesus. Somebody accepts him into their heart. Somebody decides and realizes this is not about me. This is about the one who came to save me. And there's so much rejoicing. And I'm so excited to be a part of that someday and to see the grandeur of what God has done and what he is continuing to do. It's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to that so much because these parties are awesome, but that's going to be epic. Like that's going to be incredible. Here's the deal with parties, though. When parties end and parties die, all that's left are the relationships and a little bit of mess. And sometimes if you're having a great party, like y'all know these party cups, right? You're familiar with these. Or if you're a little classier, you go with the clear ones, right? But at the end of it, you walk around your house and there's cups just kind of crushed around the house. Or you go over and... Oh, this is always the sad moment at the end when it's like, oh, bye, buddy. (laughs) Hope you find your dad. (laughs) In my mind, I picture this moving much faster than it actually is. 
We'll give him a minute. But isn't this just a great explanation of a party ending? The first person leaves, and then it's just this slow fade of joy leaving the room. Sorry. It's so sad when the party ends. It's so sad. Isn't that heartbreaking? Just to slowly watch that and go, there are my hopes and dreams. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That's not what that represents at all. That was really weird. Uh, but parties fade. Here's what doesn't fade at the end. The relationships of the people who were there. Those keep going. And so what are you investing in in the time that you get to celebrate and laugh and have a good time together? What are you doing in those times to take advantage of that? How are you really, really using that well? I had the opportunity uh, a few years ago to sit in a room with two Chick-fil-A marketing executives, which was a fascinating, fascinating uh, moment. I, I sat there I'm a, at this round table with people, and we just got to fire questions at them and hear what they had to say about different stuff. And they, they went on this 20-minute rant about the difference between customer service and hospitality, which I was not ready for that conversation. I didn't really, I'd never thought about that before. But they're talking about how customer service is all about giving people the product they ask for the way they asked for it. Good, customer service. Hospitality, then, is how you make them feel in the process. How do you make them feel? True hospitality is about how you make people feel. So when you're at these parties, when you're hanging out with friends, with family, with coworkers this holiday season, can you just think for a second, how am I making them feel? What am I showing them in the way that I act? What am I telling them in the words that I use? Am I caring for them? Am I investing in them? Am I remembering that at the end of the party, <laughs> frosty fades? <laughs> but this relationship goes on. There's a writer named Robert Block who said, probably the most inspirational thing you will ever hear. Friendship is like peeing in your pants. <laughs> full circle. Stories come in full circle here, okay? Everyone can see it, but only you can feel the warm feeling inside. <laughs> and with that, I bid you adieu. <laughs> Take care of the people who are around you. Invest in them. Show them Jesus. When the angels came to the shepherds and shared about Jesus, they left and now all the shepherds wanted to do was learn more about Jesus. When you are with people, what do you leave them wanting more of? What do you leave them wanting more of? Now, I understand when I say, say the line that at, when the party ends, all this left our relationships in a little bit of mess. I understand that usually the mess is people because people are messy, yourself included, myself included. We're messy people, and sometimes you are forced to be at parties with people you don't like. Sometimes they're immediate family. <laughs> sometimes they're friends. Sometimes they're co-workers. But remember this at the end of the day. Jesus loves the hard to love. He came to love the hard to love. So choose to invest in them and care for them anyway. Because they deserve to see Jesus regardless of their life circumstances, regardless of how you feel about them, any of those things. Care for people. I, I have a deep wound in my past. I'll just throw this out there and, and be raw and transparent. I had a, a time in my life when I had a, a couple of guys just drilling me, drilling me on all of the things that they thought that I was doing wrong in life and as a person and as a leader. And one of the things they threw at me after kind of cutting at me was you don't even care about people and they meant it and i it was like they took this this broken glass bottle and went whoop, whoop, right into my heart because that's calling my question my character into question and if you were here last week jason talked about character and how at the end of the day decorations fade character is what lasts if you missed it watch it on youtube because it's it was so good it was so good 
But my character was called into question, and it hurt, and it left a deep wound because I, I left going. People matter deeply to me. And honestly, I, I look back at that and think that was probably a great moment for me. It hurt like crazy. But that depth of how far they pushed into my character forced me to care about people even more because I had a, a whole new layer of depth to understanding that I do. I care so deeply for people. And I care that people find Jesus. And I care that people are cared for. And, and so I walked away with that going, man, at, at the end of the day, I do love a good party, and I do love all these things, but people are the heart of the party. People are what matters. People are why Jesus came in the first place. The, the most popular scripture in all of time comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, and it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's why Jesus came, to care for people and to give them life and life to the full, to say all that stuff you're holding on to, all your baggage, all your sin, all that junk that's filling your life, you don't have to hold on to that anymore. I came for you. That's what we celebrate. His whole life was about caring for people and pointing people to God. That's what our lives are to replicate, to care for people, to have parties for people, for people. Uh, author Roy Lesson says, things are temporary, relationships last forever. Nothing can replace the time we spend investing in the life of another. Nothing, 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 nothing that you do this Christmas season matters more than investing in the people who are around you. So take the time. Take the time when you're together for social gatherings, when you're at a family function, when you're just at home with your family and they're feeling hard to love, invest in them anyway. They need it. They need to see Jesus in the way that we live. They need to know that they're cared for, that somebody, somebody cares deeply for them. So my thought in that, in how you invest in someone is this, leave them wanting more. I don't mean like we're egging them on, like, all right, I'll give you the rest next week. No, no, no. I mean, leave them wanting more. When the angels left, the shepherds wanted more. They wanted more of what they had. I want Jesus. When you leave a party, do people go, wow, I don't know what's up with them, but I, I want some of that. And hopefully in a good way. <laughs> I want to be more like Jesus in the way that they are. Or, man, they're living for something different. I don't quite get it, but I'm going to go find out. Are you leaving people with a little glimpse of Jesus and helping them see that there's more ahead of them? that there's more for them. If we go back to our flannel graph story, which I kind of want to put back on, and so I'm going to, because this is my time, and I get to do what I want. <laughs> okay. This is verse uh, 16 in our story. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. Here they are. Now they're here. Now they're not on top of Jesus. That would be bad. Uh, right here, they're on a hill. You can imagine. It's, it's a sloped ground. <laughs> they couldn't afford the nice inns. Okay, so they hurried off. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The angels left. The shepherds desired Jesus, so they went and they sought him out. After they sought him out, they went back and told other people about him. There's so much in there, so much in there. When we leave people at a party, when we leave the relationships, the time that we spend with people, do you leave them, as, as Proverbs says, do you leave them refreshed from that relationship? Or do you leave them kind of feeling like, well, party's done. See you next time. See you next time. Part of the reason I think they picked the shepherds, and this is all just me guessing, um, why they picked the shepherds to tell the story to is because People in great authority positions 
People who are in power seats are used to parties. They're used to grand events, and one comes and one goes, and the next one comes in and the next one goes. And here's a group of people who are just humbly doing their thing, and God met them where they were at, and they were changed. You have the opportunity to meet somebody where they're at and to help them change, help them see what's going on. So here's, here's how I would say you invest in people. First one is this, show up. Just show up. Some people need you to just show up. They don't have anybody else who's going to show up and care for them. Show up. Second, care. Help with their needs. What do they need help with? What, what can I do to, to elevate you, to pray for you, to uh, meet a physical need, to meet an emotional need, to help you feel fulfilled and refreshed? What can I do for you? Invest. In the Christmas season, we give gifts to people we love, correct? Yes? Yes, good. We're going to talk about that next week. I'm, I will leave you wanting more on that one because I don't want to dig into it now. Uh, we're going to talk about the heart of what matters behind the way we give gifts and why we even give gifts in the first place. And so I want you to be back next week to talk more about that because it's going to be amazing, the stuff that we share in that. Um, but you invest in people and you invite. You can invite them. I'm not asking you to save people. You can't. You can't save people. That's, that's the work of God. But you can point them to the one who can save them. And you can invite them to be a part of an experience like this, where they can see Jesus, where they can see people who look like Jesus, who act like Jesus, who want to just figure more out about Jesus, who are here just asking the question, who is Jesus? Great, this is a safe place to ask that question. Please ask that question. Let's figure that out together and let's learn how to live like that. And if you want to know the impact of how far a simple invitation can go, I want you to see this, this video that's about to play because it, it'll wreck you on how wide your impact spreads just in the simple act of invitation. So watch this. So, Michael. Yes. I invited you here to get uh, to ask you some questions about Thrive and what Thrive has done for you and um, just kind of what your favorite thing about Thrive was. Um, but before we do that, I actually want to read you just something real quick. This is a letter from Jessica. All right. Okay. So. I've mentioned many times before how I did not grow up in a church environment. I had family members that went to church, and I occasionally went with them, but that was really my only exposure. A couple years ago, I started seeing posts on Facebook from Dr. Barrett. That's how I know him. It's hard for me to call him Michael. He would share various events and live things from Thrive. From Thrive. I was interested, but I was very hesitant. Because a church in a movie theater? Say what? That's not real. But boy, was I going to learn how wrong I was. My family and I had checked out other churches before, but none of them seemed, uh, seemed like the right fit. So we had backed off from going anywhere. However, something was starting to change, and I felt the need to go check out Thrive. So on February 16th, 2018, I messaged Dr. B and said that my family and I would be attending the next day. He was out of town, but he was so excited that we were checking it out. He messaged me the next day just to see how it was. I said I had never been anywhere like it. Everyone was so friendly, the message really hit home, and the music was great. We were definitely going to be back. So, we kept coming back. The more we went, the more we knew that this was the church that we had been looking for this whole time. Our faith started to grow. I talked with my kids about Jesus, something that we had really never talked about before. They started singing worship songs in the car. It was crazy what was happening. Fast forward almost two years later, and I can truly not imagine my life without Thrive Church in it. And I owe it all to you, Michael for being the encouraging and familiar faces that helped to get us started. For posting social media videos to help me get a glimpse of what I was going to before actually attending. I have grown to understand that church isn't just a building, but it's really about the people in it that matter. That you truly don't have to be perfect for Jesus to love you, which is something that I had believed my whole life. My life is so enriched now by the people that attend there. The ways in which I'm learning to understand Jesus and what the Bible is saying I'm so in awe. So many things have struck a chord within myself and my family since coming to Thrive. And we still have room to grow, but I know that it'll be great because of the people that I get to do life with now. This year, I was baptized. Me, 
baptized. What? That's not something I ever thought would happen to me or something I knew I would even want. I can never fully put into words what it felt like to be baptized that day. But let me tell you, it was so surreal. I have never felt the sense of peace that rushed over me in those moments when I came out of the water. Because of you, Michael, sharing Thrive with my family, we have been able to share Thrive with other families, and they've came to Thrive, and they have been baptized too. How great is that? You may not have thought much about what you were doing when you were sharing those posts, but trust me when I say that you were the start of something beautiful. I owe the start of my spiritual journey and the start of my family's spiritual journey to you, Michael. Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Why you gotta do that? <laughs> <clears throat> That's awesome. <laughs> it was like that Roy uh, Firestone uh, interview uh, on Jerry Maguire. Yeah. He was like, you're not going to make me cry. <laughs> and that's, that's just what it's all about. It's um, sharing, mm -hmm. sharing the good news. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when you can turn your mess into a message, you can reach other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I didn't know I had that kind of an impact on mm -hmm. this. That's awesome. That's it, right there. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Wow. Yeah. If you can tweet anything today, if you can turn that mess into a message, you can impact so many people. My goodness. Like, come on. We have the opportunity in the way we care for people over Christmas, over New Year's, and the time to come to leave them wanting more. Leave them wanting more more Jesus. So let's, let's do that. Let me pray with you guys. God, I pray uh, that in all of our Christmas parties, in all of our get-togethers, in all of our time at home with family, God, that we would, we would pour our hearts out to care for people, to invest in people, to, to realize that the relationship is what matters at the end of the party. God, it is about people seeing you. It is about caring for other people. So God, I pray that you equip us with that, give us confidence and strength to do that, and I pray that we are a people who show you everywhere we go. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.